Good morning and a very happy Easter to you this morning. Today on this Easter Sunday we celebrate the victory of Jesus over death uh, and the fact that as, as death wasn't the end of Jesus' story so it isn't the end of our stories as we receive from him this amazing precious gift of salvation. Sometimes I wish I, I could kind of read this New Testament, this story of Jesus as somebody approaching this for the first time. Uh, I'm all too familiar with this story. I was brought up in a Christian home, so this story has been part of my life since I was a young child. And, and I still am amazed at what Jesus went through for us. Honestly, every time I read about the cross and all that he suffered for us, I, I cringe at, at the agony he went through uh, for you and for me. But I always know that Easter Sunday followed Good Friday. And I've lost something, I think, of the awe and the wonder of this day, this incredibly special day. That Jesus defeated death so very completely that it could not hold him. He lives today as alive as he ever was. He didn't just enter death and then kind of escape it by the skin of his teeth, but rather, as he declares in Revelation 1 and verse 18, I am the living one. I was dead and now look I am alive forever and ever and I hold the keys of death and Hades. He came away from death with the keys. He defeated death for all who would receive this gift of salvation that he offers. I love the simplicity of this message of Jesus. For me, this good news can be summarised in three short, three-word phrases that we find in the New Testament. The first of these is found in Matthew 11, verse 28, which starts with this beautiful invitation, Come to me. This invitation, it goes on, is for all who are weary and burdened. And his promise for those that come is this, I will give you rest. This rest isn't just a temporary respite from the most wearisome and, uh, and burdensome load that we carry. It is the promise of the removal of this most depressing and debilitating burden that humankind has to deal with. The burden of our fallenness, our brokenness, our sin. How will he do this? Here we come to the second of these three word phrases. These are the words, these three precious words of Jesus as he hangs upon the cross on Good Friday. And we find them in John 19 and verse 30. When he received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. It is finished. The mission is accomplished. Jesus' death on the cross wasn't something done to him. It was something he chose for you and for, and for me. He chose the cross. He chose to die. We heard a couple of weeks ago in the, the talk that Mauricio gave on, the, on Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane about his prayer, not my will but yours be done, O oh God. He chose to obey the Father. And then when, G when Peter draws his sword and takes a swipe at one of the people trying to arrest Jesus in the garden. He rebukes Peter and he says this to him, put your sword back in its place for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scripture be fulfilled that says it must happen this way? In choosing to allow himself to be arrested, in choosing not to call on his father to rescue him, he chose to suffer for you and for me. He chose the cross. And then we come to the third of these three word phrases, the Easter Sunday greeting. This is found in Matthew 28 verse 5 when an angel appears to the women who have come to the tomb to tend to the dead body of Jesus. And this angel tells them this, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen. Just as he said, he has risen. He is alive. Death is beaten. Come to me. 
This is the invitation of Jesus to us all today. Nobody is excluded from this invitation. Come to me, says Jesus to us today. It is finished. Jesus paid the price for your and my willfulness, our rebellion, our independence, our disrespect for the living God, for our sin. It is finished. The price has been paid. And finally, he is risen. And here is where we come to this glorious passage we've read today in Revelation chapter 5 that Joe has already so beautifully talked about. He is risen. But he's not just alive, he is reigning with the Father. And we encounter more of the fullness of the identity, uh, the nature of the one who has done all of this for us in this passage. In verse 4 we see John weeping bitterly uh, because uh, he's deeply distressed that nobody can open this, this scroll, uh, that it seems uh, contains this all-important outworking of the completed mission of Jesus. He doesn't know what the scroll contains, only the Father knows that. But he does know it's so important that, it, that it's opened. But then he is directed to stop weeping because the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. And he looks at the throne and sees not a lion, but a lamb. This is our Jesus, fully God, fully man, fully lion, fully lamb. Qualified to reign as a lion because he died as a lamb. And in so doing, qualifying us, his followers, as we'll read on in this passage, Joe talked about the new song we read of in verse 9. And I don't know how often new songs would be sung in heaven. I imagine heaven to be an incredibly creative place. And so maybe new songs are flowing all the time. Uh, I don't know. But this particular song is special because it marks this, this change, uh, this mission accomplished moment. This is, what, this is the words of the song. You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals, they sing. Because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God. This is what we have become qualified for through Jesus being qualified to open that scroll through his death. And they will reign on the earth. Jesus invites us still, come to me. He invites us to share in his death, dying to our own ways, dying to our selfishness and self-centeredness, so we might receive his resurrection life. The invitation isn't to the sorted, the fixed, uh, the holy, the nice. It is to the imperfect, broken, burdened and weary people like you and me. The invitation is that we would become a kingdom of priests ruling on this earth, not by political wit or the powers of persuasion, but as a people washed in the precious blood of the Lamb and full of his wonderful Holy Spirit. Not reigning in the ways of the world, but reigning in the ways of the, of the Lamb slain for us. Let us respond to this precious invitation today, this Easter Sunday. Let us come to him. Let us gaze upon the throne where the God, man, lion, lamb reigns and invite him to reign in our own hearts this day.